Great, so I'm here to talk to you about logging. Oh, sorry, hi, I'm Ryan. Uh, Ryan Sullivan, I work at uh, Wharton Research Data Services, a department at the Wharton School of Business, where you are. Um, it's exciting. If you want to come work here, talk to Tim. Um, <laughs> and uh, we use uh, Wagtail for our website. We use Django for a lot of uh, different aspects of the uh, Wharton web presence. And something that uh, has been interesting to me is logging. Um, I really love the idea of having a, a straightforward way to get all of the sort of console messages into a, um, a, a controlled environment just so they're not just streaming across the console. And logging provides that. But I find that uh, logging isn't used as often as I'd like for it to be. Uh, I don't even use logging as, lo as often as I'd like to. Um, I, too, am a liar, sorry. <laughs> and uh, so I, I decided a couple of months ago to start um, really focusing on how can we use logging better uh, at words. And um, the result of that is that we have used logging to make our Wagtail lives easier. And I wanted to show you. So there we go. OK, so. Um, Logging, it is uh, the process of cutting wood and taking it to a sawmill. Okay, it's also not this. Okay, <laughs> so uh, it's a means um, of tracking events that happen in application. Um, you could write print statements, obviously, or you can uh, use the logging framework. One way to use the logging framework is to simply import logging and uh, then type in logging.warning. And while that will work, it will only get your message out to the console. So it's better than typing print uh, but that is about as much, uh, that's, that, that's about it. Uh, beyond that, a better approach is to instantiate a logger object, which you do by calling logging.getLogger. Uh, and then with your logging object, or your logger object, then you, uh, you can call a number of methods, um, info, debug, warning, error, etc. And I'll just pause here to really point out this. Um, before I do, how many people here are familiar with logging? Excellent. So I don't have to do too much of this. But this, I think, is so important. <laughs> These two lines should go at the top of every single method, or sorry, every single Python uh, file that you write. And you'll import logging. That'll get you access to the logger. You'll create a logger. And you'll create the logger by name. And by creating the logger by name, you will um, have a logger that's named the same as the package name of your file, and that way you don't have to uh, overthink uh, how to create your loggers. Um, there are two types of logging. Uh, there's uh, audit and diagnostic logging, and then there are sort of metrics logging. Um, audit and diagnostic is really the, the area that the Python logger is um, intended for. Uh, if you're looking at doing something like um, metric logging or sort of tracking things that happen um, in a way that you can aggregate that information later. The Python logging framework isn't necessarily for you, although there are ways that you can do that uh, through the logging framework. Um, why logging? Um, it's better. I don't have a great, I don't have a great um, example of, of, I don't have a great uh, talk about why you necessarily shouldn't be using print statements, but I can tell you that there's no way for your user to, to turn them off. So basically what you do if you're writing code and you're using print statements is at the end of uh, writing your code, once you get everything working the way you want it to, your only option is to delete or comment out those print statements, and that means that nobody else can use them. So if you use logging, then you can just turn off the, that level or raise the level of the logger um, for the statements that you wrote, the logging statements that you wrote when you go out to uh, when you, when you ship your code, and that way other people can use your log messages to sort of see what you were trying to understand um, as you're writing your code. Um, also, message formatting. It's really nice to be able to get context around your, uh, your log messages when you're reading them, and you have no access to that if you just use print, whereas if you use logging, um, you have access to all the context that was uh, there at the time that your log messages were written. I'm glossing over a lot, obviously. So just a quick uh, just a quick walk through Python logging for anybody who didn't raise their hands. Of course, half the people here, this is going to be very familiar, so I'm just going to go through it quickly. Um, 
Loggers are your interface to the logging framework. Uh, you get a logger by name. The logger's name generally matches the name of your package. That's very important. I just copied the text from uh, Python's logging documentation because it's fantastic. Um, you have logging levels. The various levels of, of logging are the way that you control uh, at runtime or basically at runtime uh, what you will see in the console or what you'll see in your emails or what you'll see in your log aggregation service and so forth. So uh, the levels uh, go from not set, which nobody uses, um, through debug up to critical. The ones that you'll generally find used most often are going to be debug info warning and error. Um, errors are things that stop your application. Warnings are things that people need to know when your application is running. So basically administrators that are running your code need to know whether it's running. Info is just uh, anything that is meaningful as the application is running but isn't necessarily a call to action or an, a, you know, an alarm. And then debug is only stuff that needs to be looked at when somebody's debugging or trying to figure out how your application is working or why it isn't working. So log records. Uh, a log record is the object that's created when you call a method like logger.info or logger.debug. Formatters, they format your method, uh, sorry, your log records and turn them into strings usually. Um, here's an example of a formatter. You can get as crazy as you want. Obviously, there's a lot too much, or there's way too much information there, <laughs> so I don't recommend that. Uh, handlers deliver messages to consumers. Uh, and your consumers can be, for example, stream handler, which uh, writes the console. Um, uh, admin email handler, which is the reason that you get those annoying messages from Django when you mess up your code. Um, take yourself off that email list. Uh, and then filters, you can't cover everything. Um, but filters are interesting. So using logging in Wagtail, um, information when you need it. So this is my code on screen uh, part of the talk. The code is there on the screen. I probably should have muted that while I was giving the first part of the talk. So the reason that I thought that, um, that logging was important is that there are frequently situations where I wanted to know more about what Wagtail was doing, and I didn't necessarily have that information at my fingertips when I was writing um, the code. So I just wanted to show you a couple, really just three examples of places where I used logging while I was writing uh, Wagtail while I was developing with Wagtail. And so th this first place is going to be stream blocks. So for example, here I am in a, I'm just going to restart. Can you make it bigger? Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Much better. Yeah, great. Um, so here is a stream block. Let's see if I can, uh, yeah. Um, and so basically everything starts through this body block. And uh, so one thing you can do is override the render method. So here we're just defining the render method and then passing off to um, the render method above us. And in between, uh, grab go ahead and logging some information about uh, this stream block. You can do this in any stream block, any stream field. Um, it'll work because you're just overriding the render method and you can just stick logging information in there. So if you, so here I'm writing logger.debug, some information about uh, what, you know, uh, the block that's being logged and the template that's going to be used. And if I go to the console and refresh the page, you'll see that nothing is logged. So the only thing you get here is the server log message coming out of, out of Django. And that's because I have my logging level set to info uh, at, my, uh, at my package. So if I choose to, make that bigger as well. If I choose to change this to debug, now this log message at the debug level, when I view this page, will tell me, will tell me, that uh, it was going to be, uh, begin rendering from a body block called body block using a template, and the template was standards block screenfield.html. 
Um, that's a very simple example, but you can see how that would be powerful if you really need, if you had a very complex body block or we're doing some logic inside of the body blocks. Um, this this could be really helpful. Um, another example of how you could use this for body blocks is actually a complete hack, um, but sometimes complete hacks are great. So if you've uh, pip installed Django, you can just go straight into, sorry, pip installed Wagtail, you can go straight into the, um, into your virtual environment and go into your install, your uh, site packages, and then just go find the render method <laughs> on, on uh, blocks, dot base, uh, block space. Go ahead and add a debug statement there, and if you do that, and you choose, they'll see those. I'm going to wait for the server to restart itself this time. And we should be ready. And render the page once more. Now you'll see that every single body block that was called in order was written out to the console. And I find that to be incredibly useful because just by looking at this page, I don't know which, uh, which stream blocks were, were called, which stream blocks were rendered. So, this is my way of seeing exactly uh, which blocks were rendered and when. And you can imagine that you could write more logging information to make that more powerful for you. Next up, I'll talk a little bit about template tags. And in this situation, these are just general examples, obviously. So in this situation, uh, I'll we're, I'm just going to talk about breadcrumbs. Uh, in our application, there is a breadcrumb at the top of the, of the page. That's here. And you can see that it says home support, getting started, uh, ways to use words. And so if you, for example, wanted to know information about how that breadcrumb is being rendered, you could, make, you could write a log message in your template tag and then turn that template tags debug to, or level to debug. Takes a minute. At which point you would see nothing because the demo gods are against me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think this has something to do with template ta with the way that template tags are loaded by um, run server, and I believe that it means they need to restart run server, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I have one more example of template tags to show you that's a little bit more interesting, but this one doesn't work. It doesn't. So what we're going to do then is change the entire CMS uh, package and everything below it to debug. And once we do that, and we're going to go look at this example page. This example page is um, using a, another template tag. Uh, and this template tag um, sort of does a whole lot, but it's very simple. It's called the variable picker tag. It actually just makes a call out to. Uh, ooh, thank you. Uh, makes a call out to the RM, grabs some results, and then it's going to log those messages back to the console. And so when I refresh this page, hopefully this will be a better example of template tags working. And so here you can see, oh, look, our breadcrumbs are now our template tag breadcrumb log messages coming out. Um, so you can see our ancestors were a query set, and above it was a uh, a data page, AHA test page six. And so if we look up here, we'll see data and then AHA test page six. And then finally, um, we're about to look for columns for a table. And then we got 480 columns back. And that's why we have this table here. It's 480 rows long. We call those rows columns. I'm sorry, we're weird. Um, my final example is hooks. One of the most, one of the funnest things about putting this talk together was I really just got to spend like a good hour on Google image search, finding log images. It was a lot of fun. This is called a cant hook. 
Uh, it's like a cantilever hook. It's for rolling logs when you're inspecting them. I don't know. <laughs> Learned a lot about logging. <laughs> um, wagtail hooks. I am honestly afraid to, to show you this demo. Oh, no, I'm not afraid. I, I will show it to you because it's running in development. So this, <laughs> um, because I don't want to mess with the production uh, uh, Zendesk um, instance. So here we basically have an integration with Zendesk. Um, I know I showed you all these contrived examples. Here's a real one. So here we have this integration with Zendesk. Uh, and. The integration with Zendesk is itself a, um, uh, where do we do this? Here we go. So we have these after page create, after page edit, after page copy, after page delete. And uh, we're calling this, uh, this method to integrate with Zendesk. And then through this method, we make a whole bunch of API calls in order to synchronize our knowledge base articles to Zendesk. And so if you go to one of our editor pages, you'll see, whoa, that's big. Uh, there we go. You'll see that we have a knowledge base tab here. And if you go into the knowledge base, knowledge base tab, you can see that you can, you can basically turn any page into a knowledge base article, and the act of saving it will sync it to Zendesk so that if you go to our support portal, you'll see all of our, uh, support article, all of our knowledge base articles in the Zendesk support interface. Um, so when you save an article here, we want to push that information out to Zendesk. And um, so. So, you know, I'm just stuff. And basically what I want to do is I want to save this. So I'm just going to publish it. And if you go back over to the log, you'll see that. So here I have the log message that was written by, um, by my uh, wagtail hook. It says start of method, end of method. And that's because I have log messages here called to say start of method, end of method. And the reason that you don't see any other information here that all this is missing because this is dev. And I'm not going to go messing up dev. Anyhow. It's going to take forever to load, so I'm just not even going to bother. Um, <laughs> so Django logging. Um, how am I doing on time? So Django logging. Uh, basically, all of this sits on top of Wagtail's, uh, sorry, Python's logging framework. You get access to Python's logging framework. Um, really, when you're running Django through Django, through the way that Django uses logging, and uh, I think it's, a, it's sort of an important thing to understand. It's actually, um, it's incredibly simple, but I feel like it's simple once you understand it. So I just figure I'll give a quick high level of how Django actually implements logging um, and, and, and why it's interesting. Um, Django, by default, logs, uh, creates logging this way. So it configures, um, uh, Python's logging interface by using this default logging configuration. And it'll give you some interesting things like um, setting up the stream handler so that your stuff goes out to the console, setting up this e admin email handler so that you get those annoying emails. And um, then it's, uh, it'll, it'll kindly set up for you that no log messages will be displayed to you except for if they're co coming from Django or Django server. So if you want slightly more than that. Um, you can set up some custom logging. Uh, and if you set up custom, you, your custom logging on top of Django's logging, uh, you can set up a root logger so that you have control over all of the log messages that are generated by the entire application. Um, you can choose to log you know, specifically from your packages, which is, of course, what I've done here. I've said I want to log from CMS, CMS being the name of the package in which uh, the, the, those log messages were coming from. Uh, you can have more information about your log messages, so forth. I'm going to go straight into this wall of code. Um, this is our logging configuration. Here it is in a less um, terrible format. And so you can see what we've really done here is um, I've created my own formatter. Um, and then for the most part, everything else is standard except for in loggers. I've created this root handler. 
So this root handler says anything that's not otherwise handled comes in at the info level. And if I change this to uh, debug, then I would get uh, any debug messages that are generated by any code running in this application. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know. Um, and finally, you can control um, your custom uh, packages. So here are some tips. Um, if you're going into production, uh, the, what I like to do is develop uh, with debug levels set for all the codes, uh, packages that I'm working on. When you go into production, just set everything to info or warning because you really don't want to see it in production. Uh, Rollbar is amazing, or Sentry, or Airbrake, or Elastic Stack, or wherever you want to send your log messages to. You can aggregate them. I'm happy to talk about this in more detail if anybody wants to talk about it. But effectively, Rollbar becomes a handler in your logging framework. And as a result, all of your log messages will be created, will be uh, sent up to Rollbar. And there, you can actually do some aggregation and, uh, and start looking at metrics and for some of your log messages or exceptions. You can send any level of log message there as much as you're willing to pay for. Um, make your own formatter. I wanted host name in the, uh, in the console. And I found the best way to get host name into the console because it doesn't come out automatically from Python's logging is to just uh, create a formatter and then use it. And so this formatter is incredibly simple. All it does is uh, grabs the record, gets the host name, puts the host name, if the host names can be gotten, otherwise it just says there's exception getting the host name, puts it on the record, and then lets the, uh, the message move on. And then the format that I showed you earlier, this format, you'll see the very, the very first uh, format string is hostname, so it's using that, that attribute of the log record. Um, lastly, uh, in WSGI, uh, send your stream to, or set your stream to standard error. Uh, this way when you go to production, yep, this is, this is a Tim Allen. Uh, <laughs> when, you set, when you go to production, because you're going to use run server and dev, once you go to production, you're going to be using WSGI. And this way, because you probably already have log rotation set up on your uh, standard error, or on your error log in, uh, in Apache or Nginx or whatever, uh, this way you are getting all of your Python log messages going into that same log, and it is automatically rotated and handled for you. It's incredibly simple. It's one line of code. Um, Debuggers are actually better than loggers. From almost all of the examples that I showed you, debugger uh, using the debugger is actually probably a more efficient way of getting the information. Um, however, using the logger is a way for you to have that information always available to you every time you run the application. Whereas with the debugger, you clearly have to fire up your debugger every time. So please still log. Here are some resources: Python, Django, and uh, uh, some documents on, or sorry, some articles on logging. This one is particularly awesome, and I strongly encourage everybody to read it. It's by Peter Baumgartner. Uh, he set up, he created Lincoln Loop. Um, it says Django logging the right way, and he really does a great job of explaining all of the details of Django logging that you wish you knew um, uh, when you started. And uh, this is an article on logging in the Wagtail framework uh, sorry, an issue on logging in the web Wagtail framework called Make Logging Better. I'm hoping to sprint on this a little bit uh, in the coming days um, because it was proposed a couple years back that uh, logging and Wagtail be made better. More information about what's going on when it happens and then more information being tracked sort of as metrics uh, or as um, events that show um, changes that were made by users over time that can be sort of audited. Um, there is uh, a lot of people have agreed that this is something that we should work on uh, as a community. And um, then there are production priorities, and this doesn't get addressed. So maybe we can spend some time on this uh, in the coming days. And finally, here's a video for you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We're going to get this working, as promised. Is there, is there time for a one-minute video, Tim? Awesome. <laughs> hey, kid. You want a toy? Uh-huh, uh-huh. How about a bike? No. 
a video game. No! <laughs> well, okay. You pick a toy. Hmm, I want... Log! Boy, oh boy. Yes, Log. All kids love Log. <laughs> Wow.